So it's entering the thing, typing in the crew. All right, and oh, we have an AI. An AI that runs the ship while everybody is in cryogenic sleep. Okay, so that's strike three in terms of crew survivability. All right, there's absolutely no chance that they are going to survive this between the robot, an AI, and the alien life form of the cargo hold. All right, and here's the name as per voter request. It's going to be Bender, even though I can't find the letters here because I'm just so unbelievably stupid. They still have load times in the future. installments, I'm going to try not to click through the dialogue so fast. He's just telling you, basically, you can wander around the ship if you like now. And in order to keep pacing, I'm not going to be doing too much random exploring, just so that you guys aren't bored of me going through a bunch of empty rooms. Here he is talking to the uh, evil AI, which has told him that he knows everything about him already. You see those little purple spheres right there next to the door? Uh, they're I mean, those are the, this game's version of the HAL 9000 eye receptor things that were ever present, you know, in 2001 if you saw that movie. So, basically, anywhere you see those purple things, it means the AI, the ship's AI is watching you, which, you know, it's just terrifying. I decided like not to go on the elevator because that might bore you more than me talking. Uh, sure hope this is recording. <laughs> I have no idea. It's going to be another six minutes before I can go this morning. So there he is, trying to get into the woman's, the uh, only female crew member's quarters, which is very important because the odds of you not stealing her panties are very low. Just because I think in the last two or three uh, events, you know, scenarios I've played through in this game, there's been undergarment stealing in every place where there's been a female character. They didn't do that in the wrestling chapter because there weren't any women in that because, you know, well, let's count that Muay Thai guy I'm still not sure. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, we know. During the long trip through space, because space is so freaking huge, you got to put your guys in hibernation. And even though they probably work for some evil multinational, or I guess a multi-planetary corporation at this point, that's something I never understood about that. They're like, ooh, evil corporations in the future that put people in cryogenic stasis and send them across space for, you know, for year-long or century-long trips. No corporation I've ever come across has ever had the kind of patience to do that kind of thing, no matter how profitable it would end up being. So he woke up the military guy. The captain's apparently already awake and hasn't been seen, so that's, you know, a bad sign right there. The ship's AI has probably already killed him and is going to impersonate him or something. But I, got, I have no idea, just in case that's actually what happens. I got no idea. So there she he woke up the minority, and the minority won't get out of bed. So, you know, once again, racism. Up oh, in here, we have the first Aryan. Yes, lovely. We have the two Aryan crew members who, I don't know, are just going to sit around and be blonde, I guess. I'm going to pretend that they're somehow in charge, even though the, one of them is the communications officer with her red bow. Oh, yeah, that's, that's regulation. And the other guy who's the hotshot pilot named Kirk. Oh, and now that the robot is done doing all the work, the guy comes in and acts like he did everything. Yeah, thanks a lot. You know what? I don't care what you think, how hard you work, Kato. The Aryans aren't going to like you because they're a couple of crackers. Yes, he finished building his robot. His name is Bender. And all the Aryans are just so delighted with their new toy that they're no doubt going to abuse horror. Huey up, get up, you lazy minority. Everybody's mad that Huey, the cargo handler guy, is still in his in his cryogenic stasis pod thing. So, rather than do any work themselves, everybody's going to make the robot do everything. Because apparently that's what the robot's for. The robot, you know, without any limbs or anything, just sort of kicks the bed there. Up, oh, and now the minority is up. Even the, even minorities are smart enough to be amazed by robots. Wow, I am just being really, really racist. <laughs> this is just wrong, man. Just wrong, me. I don't know. I'm well. I'm probably going to hell 
anyway, so I guess might as well have some fun with it, right? My name is Huey. And this is Corporal Darth. Corporal Darth. Hmm. That's a name that doesn't spell you're doomed. I'm not evil. Yeah, and it's not clear on this. Are the robots something that's unusual? Is the first real robot? I mean, they've got an AI already. Is he the first guy that's managed to cram it inside a little tiny robot? Or is it just the first worker robot they've got because they're on a shoestring? And they're all happy because they're going to try to make him do all the work and just overload the poor little guy with their selfish needs. Make me a salad, you stupid robot. I don't care if you don't have arms. What a bunch of jerks. I already don't like these guys. I mean, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's kill all humans. Come on. Alright, so when they wake up, they all have a little waking up party in the refresh room, which is, I don't know, sort of a cross between a cafeteria and a rec room, I guess. And Huey is admonishing him, treating the robot like a person. So now that they have the robot, Huey and Kato plan to treat the robot the same way that Rachel and Kirk treat them, which is like a couple of second-class citizens, because they're not blonde and Aryan and superior enough or whatever. Alright, there's the creepy-ass thing that calls me. Yep, this is the refresh room, and I'm the robot, and I probably got I'm watching watch the humans pee because I'm evil or something. And, alright, this is the end here probably going to try to do a fade out here. I hope you enjoyed this first installment. Uh, for Chapter 2, I'm going to play an arcade game. Uh, there's a game inside a game in this little room here, and that's what I'll be doing for the next chapter. I hope you enjoyed this first installment, and I'll be back again soon. Thanks for watching. I've been Staten, and this has been Let's Play Live a Live Chapter 7 Part 1. Goodbye.